Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you all to today's webinar, How to Drive Retail Growth, a Roadmap to AI Innovations. Before we begin, I am going to give a few more minutes for all the participants to join. And during our session, we will uncover important information regarding business and transformation. So in case you have any doubts, any questions, please feel free to write them down in our chat and we will cover them at the end of this webinar or in a personalized session, okay? I think we are able to start now with a brief introduction of the presenters and the agenda for today. Perfect. So first of all, let me start with an introduction of the hosts. So we have Andy Marchenko, retail automation expert from the global team based in Poland. So hello there, Andy. How are you? Hello, Cecilia, and good afternoon, everyone. Pleasure to host you today, and I hope for a productive discussion. Thank you. And myself, Cecilia Flores, inventory optimization expert based in Brazil, part of Lithio's Latin American team. Today, we have a very interesting agenda because we have divided the structure in six parts. So at the beginning, we will cover an introduction of our company. Then in the first part of the content, we will navigate through the complexities and the challenges that the industry faces today to uncover the importance of embracing a unified approach to omnichannel success. Then on the second part of the webinar, Andy will explain to us the importance of harnessing the experimenting system to achieve a strategic innovation. And later together, we will debunk the top five misconceptions about a platform implementation in retail. Finally, I will be explaining some real life cases of positive business transformation. And with this, I think we're ready to go with a brief introduction of our company. So, Lifio is now present in more than 20 countries with more than 180 projects implemented and 120 collaborators worldwide. Our offices are located in six countries. So we have offices in Poland, Estonia, Canada, USA, Mexico, and Brazil. And we have an expertise of 15 years on bringing supply chain automation. Over this time, we've been focused on creating next generation business optimization, leveraging our expertise into providing consistent results for all of our clients. And talking about the industries that we attend, it's important that we work both with suppliers and with retailers. In the case of suppliers, we have expertise into collaborating with CPG manufacturers, distributors, and wholesalers. And in the case of retailers, we have expertise in working with several verticals like convenience stores, groceries, pharmacies, e-commerce, but also very specific verticals like electronics, pet stores, liquor stores, etc. Now, regarding our clients, I am going to mention a few of our recent cases in different countries, starting first of all with SPAR, which is a world-famous retail brand based in Malta. They chose Lifia to work both uh, to transform their inventory management and their planogram management. We also have the case of Farmarcas in Brazil, the fourth biggest pharmaceutical association in this country, who chose to make their merchandising process more efficient through our planogram management solution. We have the case of Marshaleos in Canada, of Quality Oil in the United States, and particularly in Asia, two recent projects of, of Echo Shop and Flash Coffee. Today, I will be sharing some details or real, of real life cases of our clients, specifically of Plum Market, Novus, and Baltic Petroleum. So now I will give the word to Andy, who will continue with the next part of our webinar. Andy? Thank you so much, Cecilia, and thank you for the introduction. So the next part of our webinar is to really discuss what are the challenges of retail. And of course, when we look at the retail challenges, we look at it from the standpoint of retail operations. So really everything that retailers can control. And again, you know, what are the kind of tasks and daily operations that they are doing? So the first part for them to be successful is, of course, category management. So retailers really need to understand what is the best set of products that they are selling and, you know, where are they selling it and to who they are selling it. Of course, once they define their category management strategy and all the products, they need to also think about visual merchandising. So it's not only about what are the products, but at which stores are they allocated, at which part of the stores are they allocated, and again, are they easily accessible to our consumers? Once we have defined that, we also need to speak about 
forecasting and replenishment cycles because again we want our products to be available for our customers but we don't want to invest into too many stocks which is of course provides us limitations with regards to how we can use money better with regards to how we can use the money to change our business and make it better and more efficient of course once we define that we also need to understand you know how are we doing our promotions do we need to include these new products to the promotions and overall how, who is it going to affect and everything that needs to do with the preparation towards the promotion apart from that we also need to work closely with our customers with a goal to increase the frequency of their visits and of course the average check value and those are the great factors because retailers have control over them but there are other factors it's dictated by the environment which they operate it and of course those factors can cost a significant distress so in the post-covid era when we look at the word supply chain it's very much associated for us with the word disrupted because those are the third party factors unstable supply chains result in unreliable suppliers you know while very often it might not be even suppliers fault because their own suppliers have let them down but the important fact, if you can look at the category manager whose supplier has let him down and kills his strategy, you can understand the amount of distress that this is causing. Competitors, this is again coming from many directions. There are global competitors, global e-commerce who can come to your market and again, without any presence, take away your market share. But also, again, we are speaking about competition between larger and smaller firms. Sometimes, you know, our customers who, are, for instance, represent a smaller side of the business, they argue that, you know, sometimes their competitors get a better price at the retail than they buy it from the suppliers directly. So again, this is a big factor that causes a lot of distress. And everything else to do with fashion, weather, epidemics, conflicts, if they haven't caused a lot of pain for you and a lot of need for change, well, you probably haven't worked in the retail because, of course, they drive the customers, they drive the retailers towards the change. And we also need to understand the environment in which we are operating. So there are hundreds or very often thousands of suppliers, millions and millions of customers, which are generating us and millions of transactions. So, of course, we operate in this big data environment, which requires us strong IT solutions for us, again, to be operating this data and make and smart as well as informed decisions with regards to it. And Andy, talking about IT solutions, because I, I believe it's very clear that um, the audience can really resonate with this because of all the harsh landscape and all of the chaos that sometimes happen in the retail industry. So what are the options here talking about IT solutions? Well, uh, there are actually several options, but let's look at the path that usually retailers, many retailers go, and it's been, you know, fairly traditional. So the first one is, of course, working on your core mission critical system, which is ERP. And luckily, there are a number of great options. So such big companies such as SAP, Oracle, Microsoft, they've been investing heavily in order to be able to deliver those solutions, and they can also help. There are, of course, a number of drawbacks when it comes to this approach. So first of all, class of the solutions as ERP are the ones which takes the longest time to implement. So some of our customers have been working and it took them two, three, and even four years to implement such system. Again, the cost of such solution is in extreme because it, it includes every single small function, you know, like that is concerned to the retail. But at the same time, the question is, is that something that it's really going to help you or is it something that is going to make the change? Because when we look at ZRP, they have a wide set of functions, but do they have that next level technological advancement when it comes to individual niche areas, such as uh, merchandising management or such as inventory optimization or such as loyalty? Well, usually they don't have all the latest upgrades and trends. So what, what happens? What do you think happens? Well, uh, actually, mm -hmm. all those departments who are working within retail, they go and they start shopping for those solutions individually. So they just buy, you know, merchandising department. He goes and buys a system which specifically helps them merchandising. Again, marketing department goes and buys the system which only helps them with loyalty. And this is better course, in many cases, because again, this can be much faster because it doesn't take so much time to implement. But the issue is that is that you have to support in parallel all those different solutions. You have to pay all those different subscription fees to all those different companies. 
And the important part, it doesn't help your operations as it doesn't have that synergy. It doesn't provide that insights and it doesn't feed the AI with the big data it requires to bring you to the next level of results. Mm -hmm. It might even bring a bit more of complexity. Uh, Absolutely. A, a lot more complexity, but there is a mm -hmm. third approach and the third approach, what we are going to discuss about. And this is another approach that can help retailers to gain the traction and fast results when it comes to digital transformation challenges. And here we are speaking about a unified platform approach, which can help to automate various areas of the supply chain, but only this one solution. And usually those area includes such things as a category management, where again, a category manager can see all the SKUs, all the different segments, how he works with them, where are they selling and where are they selling well, as well as the different suppliers he has to work through. So when it comes to category management, he has a centralized space where he has all the data to make those decisions. A a apart from that, those platforms also can include a merchandising workflows that can help you to create a digital twin of your uh, actual store and help you understand, you know, how can you improve the layout? How can you improve the planogram? Is it really the most efficient or is there room for changing and experimentation? Uh, apart from that, there are also those systems can include number of algorithms that help can help you to improve the forecast accuracy for the demand of your products and, of course, make better replenishment cycles to have a better control over your overstocks as well as lost sales. So uh, definitely there are a number of use cases and the important part is that they can work together to help you get this type of uh, speed of the executions that retailers require to navigate within that complex environment. Mm -hmm. And also important that there are many functional areas involved here and having them converse conversating with each other is important. So do we have an example here to showcase how this works in reality? Absolutely. And kind of like uh, almost everything that you do in, in retail supply chain will somehow affect your cross-functional department. So let's speak about the most common example and, uh, you know, how it usually happens. So retailers, they, you cannot sell one product, you know, for all your time. There are, of course, very specific uh, exceptions, but overall, uh, retailers have to rotate their assortments. They have to find a better deals. They have to find something which resonates with their consumers better. So they need to be constantly rotating the assortment and seeing if they can get a better financial result. So after that, they also, after they define the assortment, they also need to understand and set up how are they going to locate them physically on the store level, where they're going to place them, how is it going to affect them, you know, if there's going to be any cabalization in place. And again, you know, uh, basically define on where is it going to be located and how much of it shall be located for the layout. And of course, once that all done, on, only at that point, procurement department can start ordering the product. But when we are talking about the unified platform approach, we understand there is one unified interface from which category manager can see all the information about all his SKUs within the category. What are the sales data? How well they're doing? What is the marginality? And which one shall be replaced? And the moment that the person does it, the merchandising team automatically gets all the information about the product, about the category, about the stores in which it should be placed, and all the information about, again, what are the alternative products? to be able to compare demand and make certain predictions with regards to the demand for this product. Again, the important part is that he automatically gets his task and he has all the same information in the same environment. After he has placed the products and established the merchandising strategy for that, the system can automatically start ordering products based on the information and based on the conditions we have from the supplier. So the question is, you know, how much time it would take you for, the question is how much time it would take you to change the product, to make those changes. And of course, when you're operating within a unified system environment, it can help you make it much and much faster. But again, that's not uh, the only benefits when it comes to the unified system. The important part is, of course, it pro helps you and provides you analytics, which are the based on the big data. And big data is the best food for the AI to help you generate those decisions. And of course, the speed of decision making can be also significantly faster because if you can see threat, if you can see shock, and if you can see challenge, the faster you can see it, the faster you can put your uh, strategy to eliminate this risk, the faster, the better result you're going to get. 
uh, of course, uh, apart from that, all those unified platforms help to unify multiple, multiple teams. Again, merchandising and marketing, promotion team and other teams. Again, we are working towards the same goal. And of course, when we have this unified environment, it's very easy to understand the goals for all of us. And it's very easy to understand how my work affects other departments and how other departments' works affects me. What is also extremely important, unified platforms are not about one solution fits all. And there are different, uh, there are a variety of uh, IT architectures that our customers have. They can have, you know, some parts very well automated, but other parts of the supply chain are still causing bottlenecks. So their solutions might not be, again, might not include everything. They might select some specific parts that would greatly enhance their workflow. And, but the important part is, is, is also, you know, a one-time integration with one platform, you can implement all those changes significantly and significantly faster. But uh, definitely it's not that, you know, like just take the platform, everything else, uh, it's horrible. This is more about, again, how can you maximize your return on the investment in digital transformation and how do we evaluate those platforms is really, uh, first of all, based on how fast it can help you generate the return on investment. And I guess, well, for benchmark purposes, want to share, you know, like how Lithia Unified Platform achieves those. So our goal and our pricing is based on the idea that we need to provide our customers return on investment within a six months. So this is not Netflix, this is Spotify. This is an enterprise software that makes you much more effective. And of course, while operating in the big data environment, this type of software allows us to really accurately see causes and effects and how our platform helps to improve the business. So apart from the return on investment, it helps you to achieve through, again, your key metrics. So it helps you to increase your sales per foot by up to 15%. Also helps you to, to heavily decrease your overstocks as it can calculate your demand much, much more accurately as well as overall increase and accelerate your turnover, but also a very big part, which shouldn't be, uh, that shouldn't be oversight is of course, the amount of manual labor it requires. The thing is, it doesn't. You can reduce amount of manual labor for all the calculations and number of decisions you are making by 80%. Because first of all, making those decisions faster because you have the view from each and every point. And of course, the system does all those calculations so you don't have to do it yourself. And of course, manually. Uh, there are, of course, a number of other factors. You know, retailers work with a number of goods that have a short-term uh, life cycle or, you know, like... A, can be expired very soon. So again, the system can also help you to significantly reduce reduction of those waste, help you to better understand your assortment, what is selling and selling where and why is it selling, and help you to optimize the number of goods that you're working with, as well as to decrease overall the number of your lost sales. Mm -hmm. And the importance to connect this end-to-end -end perspective, because sometimes those efficiencies might be lost if we have a siloed approach. But in, with this unified approach, you can really see the project as a whole and be able to connect and be able to actually see this business transformation taking reality, taking into, into life. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are other, of course, advantages to to unified system. And one of them is that it can help us to uncover those different uncertainties. The common factor between the external, external uh, factors that we looked is, of course, we are uncertain whether they're going to happen and how badly are they going to affect us. And one of the ways that can help us better understand market, better understand overall our environment, is the experimenting system that is additional advantage that is enabled by Unipod platforms. And the concept is based the idea that instead of making big, huge changes and then hoping for the best results, we uncover the data and the environment by making a small local experiment. We are able to execute them in a very fast manner to get the live data and to understand exactly what is happening now. And based on the, those local results, we can find a direction towards scaling. So again, what shall we do? What decision shall we make? Shall we make this change across the whole chain or shall we conduct another experiment and find some better results? 
And there are a number of use cases. It can be applied just to give you an example for some of them. So for instance, merchandising layout, it can, depending on how you place your products, it can have multiple effects with regards, you know, what is the number of stock you can have? How are your sales going to be? And again, other factors. So again, instead of you have the chain, for instance, a thousand stores. So instead of asking your local store employees and each and every single one of them to do a lot, a lot of manual hard labor to change everything, how about we can change it, for instance, in one store, or we can change in one store at each region. Or if you are not going to be sure about the results, let's take two or three stores in each region. But the goal is, of course, only to scale this change once you have understood that this is going to be a positive change and the market also responds positively. Apart from that, let's not speak only about customers, how they respond. Let's speak about uh, suppliers and their terms. You know, So we have the price and other factors when we are negotiating with our suppliers. The question is, can we really compare them? So we, let's say we have the same product, but one supplier is cheaper, but provides you with much better delivery schedule and allows you smaller minimum order quantity, but the price is a little bit more expensive. And there is a question, which supplier to work with? You know, Naturally, you can go and say, let's go for the supplier with a smaller cost, with a smaller price, which can also be a good decision. But are you sure about that? Because the if we need a longer delivery schedule, if they're like, you know, bigger distance between those delivery windows implies that we would have to have a much higher level of stocks. And of course, that has a cost itself. And with regards to minimum order quantity, same. So sometimes if the minimum order quantity is too high and we are not capable to sell it, we are going to get a waste and as well some other inefficiencies. So the question really, as again, the question is really which one is better. And in that case, we can simulate and see the results and effects that, for instance, this decision could have on our average inventory costs as such. So talking about all of that uncertainty, this uh, approach of experimenting system might even reduce even more the risk when facing this digital transformation. So I think it's very informative. And actually, that takes us to the next part of our webinar, because we interact a lot with clients, as we discussed at the beginning of, the, of this webinar, clients of different verticals and with different business needs. So in this case, we have compiled the five most common prejudices for this business and software implementation for efficiency. So we will cover the top five right now. So the first one that we hear a lot is this uh, concern about the need to abandon the current ERP, the current processes that are, are already tied to it. And of course, all of the effort that has been placed with the current situation. What is this uh, in reality, Andy? Do they really need to abandon their current ERP? Well, so the first uh, comes first. Well, they don't need to abandon ERP because if they do so and only use the platform, platform cannot work from nothing. It requires the data that it takes from the ERP. So the goal of the platform is not to replace your ERP, but to supercharge and make it much stronger and provide it all the additional features that are required for you to be competitive in the today, day and age. And of course, that's an important factor when it comes to ERP. So ERP is going to stay there. If there's some parts of the process which are very well work on the ERP, which are critical and don't cause any issues to the supply chain, there is no need to replace it. But every retail company, one way or another, has a number of supply chain issues which can be automated and, of course, provide a great impact towards their financial performance. Super. Okay, next prejudice that we hear a lot about is regarding the implementation times and complexity. So usually there is this misconception about all of the solutions taking a long time to implement and also taking a lot of resources from the company. So what is the reality behind this, Andy? Well, uh, the reality behind this is that no change comes without an effort. And of course, to become better, we have to do some changes. Uh, the question is, what are your options here? If you are looking for the fastest options, that would generate, again, the faster results and enable your team not to work on the new system in two or three years, but enable them to work it in two or three months from the moment that you made the decision, then, of course, you would have to take... Uh, that you, of course you would have to implement the platform because again, two, three months is significantly shorter time frame than two, three years. Of course, of course. 
Okay, so next misconception that we have is that platforms are suitable most likely for large corporations. So we talk uh, with different business profiles and sometimes they are more smaller size business, medium sized business. So what is the reality for them? Is it possible to implement a unified platform approach when the business is not that big? Well, uh, interesting enough, one could argue that a smaller companies would benefit much more from the unified platform approach, because if you look at the larger businesses, they already have a large landscape of different applications, and they feel like, you know, it's automated. And of course, each and every application helps bigger business to be more competitive. So again, from our experience, usually the smaller companies take more of different modules as they have a very low level of automation there. So in reality, if you are speaking about the type of project which would include full set of modules that would most likely be generally a smaller company but which wants to be more competitive and which just doesn't accept the fact that the customer is going to go to their competitor rather than their own store mm. and an important point here to mention is just that this integration happens only once but then we can connect the modules uh, and accompany the growth of our client together. So in this case, this is not something that would be considered like a bottleneck or a risk for medium-sized companies. Okay, next prejudice. Uh, talking about price now, uh, let's start the hard discussion here because into today's unstable world, all of the uncertainty that we explained at the beginning and all of the situations, sometimes it is not possible to plan the expenses. So talking about this, uh, this need of into creating efficiency to the business is it considered an investment to focus the resources of on one of those type of solutions or should it be considered as an expense well uh, it, it depends how you treat it if your goal is only to make uh, your uh, employee's life a little bit easier without the gain on the financial performance then that would be expense but that's are not the type of the projects that, for instance, we would go to. And of course, this platform, again, when we evaluate them and we evaluate the price tag, we need to see and look at the impact first of all. And once we understand the price for the platform and the impact it's going to bring us, we can derive return on investment and as well, how fast can we achieve it? So the question is to you really, Cecilia, if you are losing mm -hmm. $20,000 on overstock each month, but the platform costs you only like several thousand dollars each month, you know, does it come with a significant price tag or it doesn't? Yeah, maybe the current processes are even more expensive than implementing a solution that will solve and not only solve, but actually enable our business to scale and to grow. So I think that it's very clear that this is not only an investment, but it's a, a decisive point and decisive uh, improvement for all of our companies. So so I think it's it's totally an investment here. And now we reach the top five uh, here with the interface. So usually companies are used to their current processes. The teams are also used to certain interfaces, interfaces to certain way of working. So when we are already used to the ways the way things are, how do we transition into this new solution without having a steep learning curve? That's a great question, really, Cecilia. And, you know, I, I love this question because, you know, whenever I get a new solution, it also takes me, you know, some time to learn and to understand. But let's go deeper into the question. So they're in, you said, like, they're used to their processes. But it's mm -hmm. quite likely that those are the specific processes that are causing inefficiencies. You know, if I like doing something, but it harms me, then I'm probably doing something wrong. And uh, But of course, when we are speaking about uh, the adoption of the platform, there are important factors that you need to consider. And those are critically important when it comes to implementation and choice of the platform. So again, what kind of support towards onboarding are you getting from your vendor? Again, what kind of training? are you getting from the vendor? What is the approach towards making users to adopt them? And for instance, I can give you an example of how do we make, you know, for instance, how Lithio makes it. So first of all, we are not only looking like, you know, here's the platform, you know, use it as you like. No, it's really about helping you to not only change digitally, but also change internally. Because again, all platforms are requiring, main, in many cases, old processes. So the goal is for us not only help you establish those digital tools, but also help to re-engineer your 
processes. And usually we do it by actually working together and that's really an operational mode. So when we start our projects, we usually just, our trainings go on a limited category, on a limited business. And we mm -hmm. just start working use case by use case with, uh, with future end users, you know, the people who are adapting. And of course, they have a dedicated customer success who they can call every time. But of course, every time they go through a new use case, how to add new the product to assortment, how to change this planogram again, how to review a specific type of data and report, mm -hmm. we are doing it together. So you really, if that's a big concern for you, if you have a very large team and you're very concerned about adoption, really evaluate the change ma management and uh, uh, change management practices of the vendors that you're planning to work with, as this is, of course, is going to be an important factor for you. Totally, totally. And that actually brings us to the last part of today's session, which is the real life case studies, when, uh, as we mentioned, the platform approach helps us achieve business results much faster and much more efficiently. So now I am going to share some of our collaborations that we have done across the globe in three different cases and with three different business needs. So the first one of them is uh, Plum Market. Plum Market is one of our customers and they wanted to become much, much faster in their operations. They were clearly expanding and consistently opening new stores. So when we started working with them, they were uh, facing the critical part of preparing the stores with regards to assortment, with regards to planograms, with regards to inventories. And of course, they need to standardize their processes. So in this case, what is great about this is how the platform approach can actually help and save the time, increase performance, and actually connect the full operation from an end-to-end -end perspective. So we are very, very, very proud to share that with the implementation of Leafio, one market achieved a 32% 30, growth, uh, 30 through, sorry, 32% faster store launch, and was able to connect their merchandising process in 100%, which is not only talking about the merchandising, but the business process as, as overall. So in this case, uh, taking an example of the time that they used to take before leaf implementation for stocking shelves, they used to take 14 days. When implementing Leafio, they were able to reduce this time by four and a half days. So this was only possible because of having a complete floor plan and planograms available in our system. So in this case, uh, talking about the speed, Plum Market is a very interesting case study. And now talking about the experimenting approach, we have a second example of Novus. Novus is an European supermarket chain that we have been collaborating with for over nine years. An important part to mention here is that when we started conversations almost a decade ago, they used to have around 40 stores. And now their business has grown, enabled them to buy and to acquire an important business group called Bila, scaling their operations. So at the start of our implementation, we had this experimenting approach that we mentioned throughout today's session, connecting our inventory management system to a specific stores and then comparing them to the rest of the chain. We connected and talking about the field, we focused on delivery schedules and purchasing process. And in this case, we were able to see in a 12 week perspective, how the excess of inventories were reduced by 48% and that we were able to increase their performance in sales, their performance in uh, reducing other negative indicators. So in that case, we were able to actually almost a decade ago have this experimenting approach to provide this business results and then scale to the whole retail chain. And when we did that, the results were outstanding. I'm just, uh, just because this is very important for Novus, you know, it's a very complex case, but I'm just bringing here the main indicators. So when we were able to actually scale the operation completely, the results were outstanding. We were managed to, we managed to increase their sales in 10%. We managed to increase uh, their, uh, improve their turnover by 15% reduce your stocks by 11% and actually achieve a service level of 98%. And in this case, the same team was managing. So imagine the level of improvement of the performance, talking about the same persons, but now connecting our system was very uh, decisive into bringing this business transformation. And just to finish this novel example, a very important aspect to consider also is that we brought this uh, 
long-term collaboration, but also this experimenting approach. So Leafio nowadays is a platform that enables them to do some tests in their stores. So they can prove certain initiatives for category management. They can actually focus on certain stores and make sure to compare this before and after, actually providing them with all of the support and all of the platform to have the systematic changes and even grow uh, in a faster way. So now we have reached the last real life case. And this is one of my favorite customers. Actually, uh, it is based in Europe and it's Baltic Petroleum. Baltic Petroleum is a chain of 84 gas stations and they are primarily based in Lithuania. And as you know, of course, they primarily sell petrol, of course, but they also have a large number of convenience stores. So they were facing similar issues of some retailers. And of course, they wanted to grow, they wanted to be better, so they had already an ERP system, but they were facing the typical limitation that ERP system br brings. So, for example, it was very hard for them to understand their assortment matrices, it was very hard to have all of the parameters uh, transparent. transparently, they had a decentralized order management, so their system was a bit more complex and was not really helping them to, to have this convenience in their day-to-day -day operations. So, of course, and they wanted a unified platform to help them with that. And it was very uh, important to say that we were able to centralize their process and to improve their indicators, the positive indicators in 3% within the very first months of implementation. So in this case, we, uh, on the on one hand, reduce the negative indicators, for example, like overstocks, and we are able to increase the performance on the positive indicators, bringing not only this return of investment that we discussed during our session, but also bringing, bringing this business transformation. And with this, uh, we have finished today's content. So I would like to thank you all for joining today. And of course, if you're interested into learning more and more of our solutions, you can visit our website, leafio.ai. And in case you want to learn even more and see how we can particularly help your business, you can always call to our numbers or just leave your name in our landing page for a demo request. We will be happy to answer all of your questions in a personalized session and make the analysis whether the solution would be able to accelerate your business or whether you're already doing very, very great. So I just want to, to see because maybe we received some questions here during our session. I don't know if we will be able to, to answer to them right now or maybe we contact the person directly. In this absolutely. Case, I think, so, yeah. Absolutely, uh, absolutely, Cecilia, and thank you very much for your participation here, and thank you for everyone today. So it's important that we can, of course, help uh, to learn of the platform much better. And again, if you have any questions, we would be happy to uh, to invite you to the personalized sessions where we can again learn what is currently happening in your business, and again, you know whether the platform could bring you the potential effect and what kind of solutions would be helped. So again, please uh, feel free to write to uh, our website. Uh, you just have a, a, a simple button, contact me, and again, once you do it, you will be you will get a call back within the next half an hour. So thank you so much for the participation today, and we are very ho ho hopeful to hear from you soon. Thank you so much.